it should be so obvious to every Ahmadi because Hazrat Masih Maudalai Salatu Aslam has spoken on this subject, written on this subject, so has every caliph, I suppose. So it should be a common knowledge with every Ahmadi that whenever grave is mentioned in context with some punishment or some reward after death, it is not that grave dug uh, uh, on this earth, but it is a term of Islam. And this fact is proved from many verses of the Holy Quran and many traditions of the Holy Prophet that whatever is meant is not this grave, but a different thing. For instance, Ahazur Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is known to have told us that whenever some person is buried, uh, windows open into his grave. And if he is a pious man, a window from hell is, no, from heaven is opened. And if he is a, an evil man, a window from hell is opened. And he receives gusts of uh, the respective natures. So obviously whenever you dig the grave again, or due to some uh, natural um, calamities, sometimes the grave throw their dead out, and sometimes due to rain, people have to open up and reset things again. So never a window has been witnessed by any man. So Ahazur sallallahu alayhi wa sallam could not be wrong. Only the understanding of the people is wrong who take him too literally. So similar evidence is abundant through inference of it, from which we can safely assert that uh, the after-death state of the spirit is not a fully developed state. As far as our consciousness is concerned, it could be a state of consciousness as compared to our consciousness. But the ultimate consciousness, the most refined type of consciousness to which it is heading for an ultimate development is quite a different phenomenon. You can't even conceive that such a refined consciousness could exist. So that is the difference between the final developed stage of the spirit and the stage where it starts its course of development, that is immediately after death. That period in between is called the period of grave. Now, for instance, the Holy Quran throws light on this subject at different places. Number one, the period of resurrection is, as I have told you earlier, is so far removed from um, this phase of human life on earth that uh, it could be a million years or less or more. But it's a very, very large period, lo big period between us and uh, between the resurrection. And also we find that وَمَا خَلْقُكُمْ وَمَا بَاثُكُمْ إِلَّا كَنَفْسٍ وَاحِدًا that your life after death and your raising from the dead will be of exactly the same nature as your first birth. Now, what is the nature of the first birth? The Holy Quran again refers to this phenomena by inviting our attention to the changes which take place within a pregnant woman's uterus. And uh, the embryonic stage of child of, of, of creation is referred to in particular. And it is pointed out that see how we give different shapes to the embryo until it fully develops and becomes a child. So if you see the similarity, you begin to see the similarity between the first phase of life, creation, and the second phase of creation, you will immediately grasp the whole idea 
that the beginning of the fetus has in fact so far removed in quality and in shape and in essence of life as one cannot believe that this could develop into a full developed child. So that child which is born and that fetus which takes its first seed, first embryonic stage, they are so far removed that as if they don't belong to the same thing. And uh, similarly, if there is a similarity between the first creation and the second creation, the same ratio of uh, difference should exist between uh, the shape of our soul immediately after death and the shape of our soul at the time of resurrection. The ratio should be constant in both cases. Otherwise, there could be no similarity. Ma khalkukum wa ba baathukum illa ka nafsim wahida. Allah tells us that your first creation and the second creation are to be studied like the phenomena of a single birth on earth. If you study that phenomena, nafsim wahida's creation, single person's birth, then you will understand both the phenomena. So as we know already what happens during the, this phenomena of individual creation, we should also visualize what may happen after death. And the first lesson one gets is that after death the spirit would be so crude in its form as if it has no bearing and no relationship to the shape it will have developed into at the time of resurrection. So that period of development is called grave. And again this why it is called grave because again it, is, it has a similarity of the child within the woman's tomb or uterus because it is also like a grave. Everything which is developing in there is uh, um, developing in, in um, layers after layers of pouches and uh, whatever is uh, imprisoned there is, uh, finds, uh, is, is in a state very similar to that uh, which you can visualize would be in, in a grave. So that similarity continues to hold good in every respect. So the period of grave, grave is a very long period of the development of soul until the soul is ready to take a new birth and that birth would be close to the time of resurrection. And the time of resurrection I said close, maybe I should have said at the time of resurrection, but that day of resurrection should be conceived as a very big period. People think that everything will happen within the day of, of which we have here. You know, for billions of people to have been examined and to have been um, rewarded according to their own acts, actions, that 12-hour day is not just not enough. It's enough for God, but not for the people to understand what's happening. So the phenomena which is described in the Holy Quran positively refers to a day of much longer duration. Could be a day which has been described in the Holy Quran as comprising 50,000 years. So in a period of 50,000 years, Souls would be taking shape, the earlier, earlier shape, souls perhaps uh, will be taking shape earlier or maybe those who are pious men, their souls would develop earlier than everybody else's and so on and so forth.